Hey everybody, it's Captain Kyle. I'm here at Zenkai Khan with Richard Epcar and Ellen Stern. Very well-known voice talent. Richard is known for Mortal Kombat, Bleach, Injustice, Lucky Star, Ghost in the Shell. I could talk more and we'd run out of time. Ellen Lupin III, Mobile Suit Gundam, also Bleach. And also going back, uh, parts on Silver Spoons and Chips. Yes, we're, we're, we're gonna, and Charlie's Angels. Charlie's and... Angels, yep, that... <laughs> You're talking, you know, the old days, what I loved. Yes. But, uh, so how are you guys doing today? How are you enjoying the con? It's great. It's, it's, uh, we've been doing a lot today, so it's, it's been a little exhausting, to be honest with you. But it's, uh, it's been fun. We love this con. This is we one really of our favorite cons. We really love this con. So we love coming yeah. here. The people are terrific, and uh, the people that run it are really sweet. And what are you pointing? I'm pointing at the camera telling the people they're terrific yeah no they're very very <laughs> sweet it's a sweet con it's one of the, our favorites the people who will be out there one day watching <laughs> who are those people the people i think you see the people without the camera that's no, what worries me no i know the people are going to be there and oh, that's why okay. i'm talking about the people i know okay Anyway, this is our third time here, right? Yes, it third is our here. third time. Last and time we, we were here was uh, 2016, I believe. 17. 16. 17. 16. No, it was 17. No, I know it was 16. that. I, and I if you didn't know they're married, so, you know, if you couldn't tell by that. It's hard to guess, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm right, and he's not. Okay, okay. let's move on yes, from there. Yes, please, let's. <laughs> can you, can you have, make a mask like that for my wife? I can tell you who made it. <laughs> All right. you I think it. that would fit your head perfectly. I think it would fit your head better. All right, go ahead. All right. Kyle. So this is Captain just Kyle, a, should call you. a preview of the Life's a Bitch uh, sitcom <laughs> yes, and the is. dialogue being used. <laughs> Absolutely. So is, that's yes. what that was all about. There <laughs> yes. Are, we're just, uh, you were doing a little preview for you. That's all. That's Absolutely. my sitcom. I have two teasers out. Shameless plug. We're all about yeah, the shameless plug. I have plug, nothing so to do here. with it, apparently, so. I yeah. wrote it for, well, you you were in it with me. And Stephen Topolowski. I was in it with you. Okay. We were in it together. All right. All right. So before we. Uh, He's already sweating. We haven't even started. He's going, how am I going to do this? Don't leave it after this, man. <laughs> this is too much pressure. It's okay. There's a bar downstairs. All right. Finally, to get to my first question. Yes, please. <laughs> how did each of you discover voice acting? I was starring in a film, it was a Western, and at the end of it, the casting director said to me, would you like to do some voice work? And I said, sure. Well, I was living with this guy, and I said, do you have a need for guys? And I said, yeah. We both went, we auditioned, we both got the jobs. That was my husband, Richard, this guy sitting here, by the way. So okay. this is all her fault that I'm in this business. I blame or, her. Or you owe her your career. Let's not put it that way, shall we? <laughs> oh, we can. We can. No, let's not. Let's I not. think we should. <laughs> no, let's not do that. I like that. I so, don't. <laughs> so you've all done live action. Yeah. Um, you've done voice work. You've done yeah. video games. We've done theater. We've done all we've kinds done, of stuff. Yeah. Everything. With your, you're all across the thespian spectrum. Yes, that's yes. one way to put it, yes. We create. Now, you, you've done a bit of anime. Yeah. A uh, bit? A bit. A bit, a little bit. <laughs> and you've done some video games. What do you find more challenging, the matching the flaps in the anime or doing all the reactions for the video games? <clears throat> well, uh, you know, honestly, Dubbing is what what you're talking about when you replace uh, the dialogue because mm -hmm. a lot of these a lot of these shows are from Japan or other places and we have to replace the dialogue with English dialogue obviously and when you're when you're trying to match the flaps and do all that stuff you're you're you know you you want to give it a good performance as an actor but you also have to match those flaps mm -hmm. so you're you're thinking about that and you're trying to do that as well it's uh, we've been doing this a long time now so it's all kind of second nature but I think honestly uh, it's it's better when you don't have to worry about that because then you can just, you know, become the character and play the character and not have to worry about that stuff. And then they animate to your voice tracks. So it's, you know, generally Although, better. <clears throat> we've been doing this for 45 years now. 
And I'm only and 35, so I don't know how that's that happened. And I'm still is. in vitro. I was never good with math. <laughs> um, so. Any, anyhow, we've been doing it so long. And when we started it, they didn't, there were no beeps. There were no pro, to, there wasn't pro tools. Yeah. There, there wasn't anything to assist us. And so we became expert at dubbing because we had yeah. to be. Yeah, well, we do a lot of it. So, yeah. And in the old days, before they had all these uh, incredible, uh, you know, uh, everything was dig now everything's digitized. Everything's, you know, they beep you into where you start the right. line and all that. Uh, you had to basically just keep doing the line until it fit, you know, which is where they get the term looping because they would loop the right. line over and over again. And you just but actually, going. when we started, they used to call it reels, and there were these yeah. big, huge yeah, reels, reels. Yeah. big, huge movie reels, and. So <clears throat> you'd get a break because they'd go real change, yeah, real and they had to pull. They had to pull these big reels out and bring them to the real room and bring in another one. Did they so walk they around could, like this when they were doing it? They did. Well, okay, they did. With you. Right. And so they had to bring in these big reels yeah. to record on uh -huh. that were unrecorded. And that was nice because they would give us a five, ten minute break. Now everything's digitized, so they just go, We're gonna go to real nine, and they go, boop, and you're right there. So and you're like, uh, Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, I, no rest for the weary. I, I totally get it. I understand. Um but you've you've been in a lot of productions to put it yeah. what was it, twelve hundred different Over twelve hundred characters, I Thirteen hundred. Yeah. yeah. We'll we'll say you're right on that. Can okay. you read between the lines? <laughs> Which line? <laughs> okay. Um, this is supposed to be a relatively family friendly. Oh, yes. Hi. Well, I so done it. please don't fucking swear. I, I, oh, Hi. wow. I've never heard that sort of language before. He I, doesn't sure. use language sure. at all. <laughs> <laughs> I have wow. to teach him. Um, of the various roles, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to pick a favorite character. I know you get that. But is there a particular line that either of you can recall? A, a line or a scene that really affected you emotionally as you were performing it? You know, there was one, uh, um, what was the show we were doing that I wrote and you played the part and it was something, there were sisters and the sister died. Remember she had a disease or something. I'm trying to remember what show it was, but I, re I, I was writing and directing this show and I, Ellen had that, the part of the sister whose sister was dying and, uh, was that Kenshin? I'm sorry, I can't remember. We have uh, no, I, so I mean, days. we have done hundreds and hundreds yeah. of these. Oh, but, it's hard to remember. <laughs> but anyway, the point was I was going to make was I it really uh, impacted me, and it, to the point where I was like I could barely finish writing. I was like you know crying and everything. It was really really rough. So uh, yeah, so this stuff does it really does impact you, and uh, you mm -hmm. know we're we're both actors. We're we're both. We're actors first. We we were both trained on stage first, and we we both done film and you know all kinds of stuff. But uh, we really jump into these characters and we become these characters. So you know when things happen uh, that are sad or whatever, it really it really affects us. And I think that that's you know that's as it should be when you're when you're acting. I think if it affects you, it's going to affect the audience. So um, I think it, that works out well. There was one. Interestingly enough, somebody asked me about it earlier. Uh, there was one video game that I was voicing and I was directing years and years ago called Jade Cocoon. And it was about women who nurtured and gave. And each time they gave, they'd lose a skin and the skins kept shedding until they had nurtured and given all their skins and there was nothing left to give and that's when they died and i sobbed i sobbed because that kind of is what women do we we are givers except to him yeah well, hopefully you're not losing any of your skin as long as you leave it on <laughs> I don't even right. know what that means, but let's continue on, shall we? How about we go in the other direction? A very yeah. happy moment that you, you were really happily affected. 
Well, I, I think it's always fun when you play a character that you can really relate to. Like, I love playing Raiden. He's really a fun character for me. Uh, Bato. These are these are just really uh, honorable, noble characters, and I just I really feel a kindred spirit to them. You know, I also play a lot of villains too, and they're a lot of fun too as well. But uh, it just it's fun to for me it's really fun to connect with with the character who's you know saving the day or being the, the good guy or you know coming through and i just i really for me i really like to you know connect with those characters i'm just glad you didn't say i really relate to the joker because i might have to leave <laughs> <laughs> exactly any particular characters uh that- you know every time i do a show I get so involved with the characters. I, I was trained method. I, I mean, I studied for a million years. Um, I, I relate to the characters as if I was doing them theatrically. And I go deep, I cry, I laugh. And which- That's just in the elevator. No, I don't do it in the elevator. Not at all. I hope you're Anyhow, not doing it in the elevator. This is a, a very nice family show. I didn't um, say anything. <laughs> anyhow, uh, I relate to the characters so deeply. And for me... How deeply as, do you relate? This is my turn, not oh, yours. Okay. Um, I relate to them so deeply that when I am going through emotionally relating to the character, that is my greatest joy. So every character brings me joy. Everyone does. And I can't say this one more than that one because they all do because it's about discovery and discovering and finding the, the depths of the characters, their joys, their sadnesses, that all brings me joy. Well, that is awesome. I think the woman in the next room just lost all of her skins. Did you have anything to do with I, it? I wasn't there. I was here with you. I have witnesses. We okay. have it on camera. So That's right. You, See? Have, you have an alibi. <laughs> At no I'm time did my fingers leave my hand. I'm going to be watching. Okay. <laughs> So, so when you guys were growing up, what characters were your idols? Because a lot of people look at your characters, and uh, I'm afraid some of them look at the Joker and I say, "That's my idol." But growing up, what was your that always that always confounds me. I, uh, you know, I love playing the Joker. He's a really fun character. I mean, he's he's but he's he's insane and he's horribly cruel and he's just really a terrible, awful person. Mm-hmm. And I, I, when people go, oh, I love the Joker. It's like, why, why do you, you know, he's just <laughs> because terrible. Because he also has humor. Okay. So he can torture people, but as long as he's got some jokes, he's okay. You know, it's just, well, he's you, really aw- an you awful know, character. You have to realize one thing, honey. You have to realize one thing. It's pretend. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, it's funny because uh, actually Ellen and I, when we were, you know, we were on camera actors, and well, we, I still she am. still is, and I occasionally am. Um, we were getting our video reels edited, and we were at a place, and Bob Kane was there, the creator of Batman. And it was funny, the thing he said to me, he goes, you know, Richard, you know, you have to do to succeed in this business. I said, what, Bob? What do I have to do? He goes, you have to come up with a character like Batman. I said, oh, okay, Bob, that should be easy. So anyway, uh, it's just kind of interesting to me, because I met Bob Kane, and then uh, I... I did the Joker, and then I was uh, playing. I played Commissioner Gordon in uh, <clears throat> Batman Unlimited, and then I played Solomon Grundy in another Batman show. And it just like I directed uh, Arkham Origins and played some characters in that. So I'm just like it, it's just interesting to me because I love Batman as a kid. He was one of my favorites. So getting back to who who you liked as a kid, and so it was just interesting to me. I was able to get into that world and that universe and and do all those different characters. It's really a joy and a thrill for me and it's it's you know it's fun when you uh get to do something like that and you know and on camera i got to work with some people that i really really admire uh, as actors so that was really fun too yeah you know we're very we're very fortunate both of us we've worked you know constantly you know and and we've been very very lucky and fortunate in the business so very very blessed yeah i actually idolized fairy tales i I love stories. 
I love writing. And so my heroes were the imagination, the imaginary people that I'd read about in books. I mean, I loved Peter Pan. I loved, I loved, actually Peter Pan was my, my biggest hero growing up because, when I was a little girl because Peter Pan had so much joy. <clears throat> and I wanted to incorporate that into my life. I wanted to bring that joy and that freedom and that creativity. And I've been very, very fortunate in that I have a wide range of creativity. I write, I direct. My primary creative force is acting. I'm a classically trained actress. I do Shakespeare. Um, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I have a show on <clears throat> Life's a Bitch. Mm -hmm. I've got the two teasers out right now. Um, I feel limitless in creating. And I love creating. And if I couldn't create, I couldn't breathe. I have been very, very fortunate that I have worked with some amazing, amazing, amazing actors. And we're, we're having a time. Yeah, yeah, we we're, we're kind of running out of time. I'm ready. We're just getting yeah, started. I, I know, I know. But the other thing is you got to marry Peter Pan. No, I, I married the Joker. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, I know no, a good lawyer. Right. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because she gives me shit all the time because I'm a huge James Bond fan. And she always gives me crap about that. Mm. And, and, you know, but, well, but it's okay for mm. fairies and all that. That's real. Uh, well, but James Bond James, is horrible. James yeah. Bond is not a woman's fantasy. If you that fell in not, love, am I a woman? If, if you fell in love with James Bond, he'd never come home. He'd never show up for dinner. If you fell in love with him, you'd die. If he fell in love with you, he'd die. See, you'd die. There's you'd a reason still I like die. him. I mean, you know, he's a bad fantasy for a woman. I am the same. Well, he does like a dry martini, shaken, not stirred. Yes, of course. Of course he does. Yes. <laughs> Well, we are just about out of time. Um, thank you both for for spending this time with us. Thank you. And um, giving us a glimpse into your domestic quarrels. That was yes, awesome. Yes, and thank you for <laughs> being the impetus for us getting divorced next week. So I appreciate okay. that a lot. Well, you know, sometimes I don't have to pay anything. But these don't come up No, anymore. they don't. We've been, we, we've been married 41 years, which is insane. We've been together 43 years. Yeah. yeah. And we play a lot. Who are you? We love to play. <laughs> well, this has been awesome. Thank you guys yeah, thank you so guys. much. Our thank pleasure. you. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And follow and us on Instagram, please. Please. Yes. And not uh, only that, but have fun and follow your fandom. This is all for one. You are watching Fandom Spotlight. Continue to do so and follow your fandom, or I will obliterate everything you protected.